church. Today is the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please take a moment to silence or turn off your cell phone. A note on face coverings. We are so grateful to be able to gather once again for Mass to celebrate God's Word and share in the Holy Eucharist as a parish family. This is a gentle reminder that face masks must be worn during Mass and must be properly worn, covering the entire nose and mouth. It is a great pleasure in the middle of these glorious summer months to sit back and listen to stories. The crowds in the Gospel were able to do just that, for Jesus taught them by telling parables. Parables made his lessons about the kingdom of heaven memorable in ways in which straightforward narration would fail. Now it is our turn to listen. Let us savor them, ruminating on their rich image, images and considering their meanings in our lives. And we have a brief note today from the Marist missions around the world. We're, we're reading this uh, before Mass. It says, The Society of Mary, Marist Fathers and Brothers, is an international religious society founded in France in 1816. At the request of Pope Gregory XVI in 1836, when the society was officially approved, the Marists accepted the task of spreading the gospel in the southwest area of the Pacific. In that same year, the founder, Father Jean-Claude Collin, sent the first missionaries, nearly one-third of the new congregation's membership, on a year-long trip to the remote and vast regions of the Pacific. From that time on, a steady stream of missionaries was sent to the islands of the Pacific. Among them was one who would eventually become the patron of the Pacific, St. Peter Chanel. Today, there are nearly 230 Marists serving in eight Pacific Island nations. They are found in parishes, bush stations, teaching in schools and seminaries, novitiates and other training institutions for local religious as well as in catechetical schools. They are deeply involved in preparing and educating Pacific Island Catholic, Catholics to take their place in leading and ministering to their own local church. They also foster the betterment of the people with whom they minister. Some have initiated agricultural programs, helped people bring water to the villages, fostered health and hygiene programs, formed credit unions and marketing societies, and assisted various fines of development and self-help projects. Over the years, the Marists have undertaken missionary work in other areas of the world. In response to the Lord's command to go to all the nations and the Church's appeal for missionaries, the Marists have responded by going to areas in South America, Africa, and Asia. Here again, Marist priests and brothers can be found in parishes, mountain villages, training future priests, and working with the people providing a living witness of God's message of love and hope to the poor, abandoned, and the oppressed. All they do is in Mary's name. Marists are very much aware of the fact that there is a gigantic task still to be accomplished because the gospel message has not yet been heard, or scarcely so. And that's a decree on the missions from Vatican II by many people. They hope that their efforts may be a real and effective contribution to the missionary task of the church. And again, the second collection today is for Mission Sunday for the Maris. We ask please, of course, for your generosity. Mass today will be offered for Gloria Lanigan. Now let's have a moment of silence as we prepare for the celebration of Mass.
Our gathering song this morning is number 560, Bless Be the Lord, number 560. said to heal the contrite of heart. The Lord have mercy. The Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. The Lord have mercy. on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. <coughs> Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that may fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. wheat 
And then he gives the responsibility of caring to some of the, the people who work for him until the time of the harvest. The caretakers halfway through the wheat growing find something different. Caretakers go up to the farmer and says, why did you plant weeds? Weeds, with the wheat. And he answers, someone evil has done this. And like God says in the first reading, I'll take care of that. But for the time being, let us keep the two, the wheat and the weeds, growing together until the time of the harvest. Let's try to maybe understand a bit what the meaning of some of these things are. First of all, we know that the farmer is God himself. He plants every season. He even planted us in this world. But first and foremost, he first planted us in his mind and in his heart. That amazing. Eh? We were in heaven before we came down to earth. Anybody remember that? <laughs> if you do, please see me after. <laughs> we know that wheat is anything good, first of all, including good people. We know that weeds certainly is anything evil, even people. And the evil tries to always destroy what is good. Do you get it so far? Yes. Okay, 17 of you said yes, it's good. <laughs> the whole farm is really about the church that he is building. And the harvest will come at the end of time when God will take that which is good or those who are good, bring them up to heaven, and those who are bad or those who have done things bad, we know where they'll be going. To a place where God is not. And that can be hell. Jesus says today, as he's teaching, he says, let the wheat and the weeds grow together until the harvest days. In other words, what is God saying? He's really giving time to the weeds to change. Is it possible for weeds to change? Oh, with the grace of God, they can change giving them strength, giving them the good will to be reconciled with God. In this gospel, Jesus presents to the apostles and to us such a wise and such a patient God who allows the good, the wheat, and the evil, the weeds, to coexist in this world. He even will eventually bless the weeds if they somehow produce something good. That they too may come to conversion and to life. Through this parable of the wheat and, and the weeds, Jesus calls us, he really calls us to be patient with those who fail the weeds. Those who fail to meet the high morals and, the, and, 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 and ethical standards that should exist in those who believe in Jesus Christ. Especially challenging for us Christians in the Roman Catholic tradition as we are blessed to live. God asked us to pray for the conversion of those who act more like they belong to Satan who act more like they just want to cause trouble all the time. Anybody know some of those people? Oh, now you're nodding, you're nodding, sure. <laughs> we are called to recognize evil in this world, to name it, and because we can't really fully handle it, to give it to God. Isn't that amazing when we're able to pray for these people who haven't yet been introduced to Jesus Christ and so often do not know where they go and what they're really looking for. As we give them to God to care for, just like the way the farmer in this parable says,
that I'll take care of the two mixing together. So what's God calling us who do believe? What is he calling us to do? Because he needs us, does he not, to be good, to grow in holiness so that we may attract other people to know Christ. Did you know that that was your job? Do you really mean it? Okay, good, good, good. What does God want, my friends? He wants us to do good, first of all, instead of doing evil. He wants us to bless instead of cursing, to praise instead of criticizing, to help instead of standing on the side, to love instead of hating, to forgive instead of resenting, and to tell the truth, to know the truth instead of living life. I love the fact that many of the apostles first started like weeds. Really, like weeds. For example, when we look at them, Judas, we knew would come a time when he would betray Jesus. Sounds like weeds to me, right? Peter, who will in time deny knowing Jesus three times. Thomas, who would doubt that Jesus was truly resurrected. John and James, who simply want to have a seat right next to Jesus when he comes to the throne. In the end, it's an amazing that what appears is it's only Judas who apparently chose not to fall. But look at the others. Look at the weak they've become. And look at how today, especially because of their lives and their writings, we can continue to grow in greater holiness. In light of the story, do, do, do we sometimes treat other others like weeds? Are there people in our lives that we wish we would be able to pull right out of our lives? Maybe they live in our homes. Maybe the people we work with, or neighbors, whoever they may be. And why do we treat them as weeds? Because it can lead us not only to judging them. Judging is reserved to God, is it not? Did he not reserve judging to the end of time, giving every piece of wheat and weed an opportunity to be reconciled. Judging, my friends, leads to pride, which is the greatest sin. That's why an invitation today is given. Don't spend your life judging others, thinking they're weeds. Why? Because each one of us, my friends, is a combination of wheat and weeds. In each one of us, we have elements of the kingdom of God, and we have elements of those deeply opposed to the kingdom of God. Even those who say they love the Lord sometimes may reveal that they're working more for Satan sometimes in the way they live their lives. Why? Because the time of judgment is not yet come. Because the kingdom of God here on earth is still in the growing stages. The church, my God, is he patient with us, right? So patient with us, purely because of love. God's church is still growing. And even today, we can say, Lord, give me the grace to grow a lot more. Why? Because now is the time for greater conversion. Now is the time, my friends, to help others with the grace that we've been given. Now is the time to look at people who, and there are many people who are suffering during this coronavirus, whether directly or indirectly. Many people struggle with the fact that they have to be put here or there, isolated. Many people are struggling here. For us to be able to have the eyes to look at them, to be able to reach out to listen, to bring them peace. That's our job because we've been equipped as wheat to nurture.
So my friends, allow me to begin to close with a statement by Carl Rana, who was a, studied him 40 years ago in the cemetery, seminary. I get mixed with those words, you know, <laughs> cemetery, seminary. No, I'm just joking, I love my experience there. But we studied him and some stuff I had a hard time with, but he made some amazing statements. He gave advice to those people who are collectors of the weeds, pulling them out, throwing them out. Here's what he says. He says, the number one cause of atheism is Christians themselves. What? Yeah, listen to what he says. He says, what an unbelieving world finds simply unbelievable is the presence of those who proclaim God with their mouths and deny him with their lives and their lifestyles. You see the invitation here. What we say and what we do reveals either the fact that we are so in love with God or reveals that we may be living in darkness ourselves. Maybe the, perhaps the best defense of God would be sometimes to just keep maybe our, our mouths shut. That'd be a great thing for some of you, uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and to live as he told us to, to know that his word and to make them rich and alive within us. The gospel, my friend, would have so much power and attraction if we dared to live as prescribed by God. We wouldn't have to worry so much about defending it because it's visible and it speaks loudly. My friends, for us to know that the good news is being empowered by us knowing not only things about God, but knowing Him personally. To empower us to love Him. To empower us to make Him loved. To make Him known. And probably the most, I believe these, these are the most effective forms of weed control. Weed control. In the end, my friends, may we know the amazing truth that we were planted in this world by God himself, and that we are part of a growing, healthy harvest called the church, and that someday we will be reaped up, we pray, into the heavens by his very So my friends, we stand and proclaim our belief in the God expressed today. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things remain, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified by the conscious power. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father's Son, who with the Father's Son is adored and glorified. Who has spoken to the cross? I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You have heard God.
God's precious word and invitation. And now we humbly ask the Lord to listen to our words of need and to respond to them. For the church, that we may reveal God's mercy in the way we feed the hungry, house the homeless, visit the imprisoned, and love the refugee. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to recent attacks on Catholic statues and buildings around the country, and an end to violence and persecutions of all faiths. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our political leaders, that they may work in a spirit of cooperation for the common good to end the coronavirus pandemic division in our country, foreign cyber attacks, and other threats. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual growth of our parish community, especially our young families, that all will commit to the truth of the gospel with zeal, self-sacrifice, and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that through Christ's gift of the sacrament of reconciliation, we may repent of our sins and find comfort in God's love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian marriage, that this visible sign of Trinitarian love remain protected from attack. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Mass is being offered for Gloria Lanigan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Take this moment, glory, to lift up to you in this time of stillness our own personal <laughs> intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And yes, Heavenly Father, we believe that you will answer us. For we pray in the precious name of your Son. Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of His holy Church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion the varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, the sacrifice from your faithful servants, and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, God, O Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave, my peace I give. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. And with your spirit. Not with our hands, but with our eyes filled with the love of God. Let us offer each other the sign of his peace.
the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Before I give to all of you the precious body of Christ, may we assist our brothers and sisters who are at home and yet with us in prayer here to receive a spiritual communion at this time. So I ask you home if you would repeat this prayer after me. Many of you who want also to pray, please do. My Jesus. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment Receive you sacramentally. Receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually. Come at least spiritually. Into my heart. Into my heart. I embrace you. I embrace you. As if you were already there. As if you were already there. And unite myself. And unite myself. Only to you. Only to you. Never permit me. Never to be separated from you. To be separated from you. Amen. Amen. invite those on the lectern side of the church to come to communion first.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray in St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be viewed if we come to prayer. And do now, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell, Satan, and the unbelievable spirits who dwell in the heavens above. Amen. 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 Please bring your used missiles with you when you leave your pew and deposit them in the box near the exit in the hall. Leave the kneeler down in your pew so our helpers will know which pews have been occupied and they can disinfect them after Mass. We invite you to kneel for a few moments after the final hymn to pray silently for vocations and peace in the world for all people. I was reminded again that uh, our second collection of four the Marist priest missionaries who were privileged to have them in Maine years ago serving the parish in Van Buren and in Brunswick. And like us, we are certainly there decreasing also. The church still goes on. Amen? Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a blessed Lord's Day today and a great week. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Our final song of praise is number 430. Blessed be the Lord, number 430.